What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Flipside Focus. I almost started this show out like some of the other shows that I do, but I didn't. <laughs> I did. The one and only uh, Johnny the Machine Hughes, he would have been upset with me. Get it right, dudes. Get it right. Because, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I could have started this off as the Pepper Pack podcast, and you'd be like, well, I don't even drink that. Peroni, baby. Peroni. I know. I, uh, I, I've i got my Dr. Pepper here. Um, for, the, for the audience who always sees me with a beer in my hand when I do these pods, no, I'm not an alcoholic, but... He doesn't go to meetings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what you got to remember is that I'm in the UK, and every, nearly everybody else, bar Tracy on TVC, is stateside. So everybody is at least five hours earlier than me. All right, just saying. Let's call it like it really is. You're like, oh, God, another pod with Josh. Oh. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I'm all out of Dr. Pepper. And that's as such, let's talk about some indie books because that's, that's what we're here for, not to talk about what we're drinking. Okay. Let's Although go. we could. We, we no, could do that. No. No? Uh, okay. Fair, fair enough. <laughs> oh, my God. It's been a day. It's been a day. All right. So here's, if you've never watched the show, we we spotlight indie books. So yeah. anything other than the big two, which, to be honest, are probably some of the best reads that we've ever had. Yeah, I'd say that. I think I'd say... I think I tell you, the indie market is absolutely totally um, free from the constraints of mass media influence. There you go, mass so that, media and the power and the powers that be. The yeah. powers that be. Yeah. 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 Cool. I will say this, um, and I think we talked about it recently on on an episode of TVC when we were talking about um, the new which book Sandman book. The new Sandman book from DC. Everyone loves Sandman. Really? Everybody loves Vertigo Sandman. Now everybody loves the new Sandman. Because let's be honest, since Vertigo deceased and Sandman stopped before then, mm -hmm. the indie market has absolutely exploded to the point where you can get better bang for your book without the need to have a DC book or a, a DC imprint. So... You know? Yeah, yeah, that that would make sense. Um, I I think the one thing that really makes indie stand out for me mm -hmm. is, as you said, the they're they're not limited by either continuity, the powers that be. Yep, editorial but, editorial control. Mm -hmm. um, I think the biggest thing is the variety of books that we're able mm. to get. You know, we we've talked to other creators in the past i mean yep. you know scott snyder did mm -hmm. his uh, nocturna book you know the, these writers these creators have these great ideas but when they're working with the big two you have to fall in line with you know this is the mo the the model for batman this is the mm -hmm. model for iron man or spider-man or whoever mm -hmm. it may be um wonder I mean woman yeah, I mean, I think Snyder's probably one of the exceptions. You know, the fact that you know it was on a vampire book beforehand, before mm -hmm. he got his big break at uh, DC. Although the vampire book itself was a DC book, um, Detective Comics was about to get cancelled. Detect and uh, Dick Grayson was the Batman. No mm -hmm. one was buying it, so they gave it to this young, young punk writer, Scott Snyder. Scott Snyder. Yeah, yeah. And who then? I almost got my Snyder's mixed up there. Give it to this young punk, Scott Snyder, and boom. It turns in Black Mirror, which was absolutely fantastic. But you can't look at Black Mirror and say that that's an out-and-out -out DC superhero story. Yeah. And it put Snyder on the map. And yeah. then he goes to do Batman as part of the New 52. And then, I'm not saying the wheels fall off the wagon, because he's, he's an absolutely, he's one of the best, he's one of the friendliest guys in all the comic books. Oh, yeah. Super absolutely. nice. 
Um, but then you find out, you know, as much as you can weave an interesting story with the court, the punchlines always, for me, don't land. You know, after after 10 issues of Court of Owls, or however many it was, mm-hmm. I expect the villain to be more than the uh, the, the person we saw in issue one. I expect yeah. a little bit more than that. All right. But, you know, hey ho, he's done great for DC. You know, Batman, because Batman run lasted 52, 52 issues or something. So, yeah. Um, but, and and Noct- Nocturnal was great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I um, thoroughly enjoyed that. Yeah. But I think, like, think of it from the other way. Think of, you know, think of um, people like Ram V from Vault Comics, who was on uh, these Savage Shores, mm-hmm. who then jumped across to Justice League Dark. And then jumped on the Catwoman, yeah. and has continued now. I think he's working on Venom for Marvel. You know, so this is someone who's definitely got um, a horror twist, a horror vibe, if you will, mm-hmm. who's managed to weave it in through the various different um, mainstream books that he's worked on. And you know what? He's J- Justice League Dark and Catwoman. DC aren't printing those to make money. They're just printing it for you know because it's Catwoman. So yeah. just to sleep on it, yeah. Nobody, no one's making any money on those books. Yeah. So, so hence, Ram V can get away with some of the the more indie stylings. But you've got Stephanie Phillips from Dark Horse Comics now on on Harley. Yeah. You know, I think there's a, a massive influx of indie creators trying to shape the big two. Mm-hmm. And you, we we see that in the black label stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So. Definitely. But moving away from the big two. And indie comics. And into the indie comics realm. Yes. We are. You know, as as we, I I feel we've started doing, um, we're going to let the coin decide who goes first. Now, this time, because I couldn't actually find my my coin, I think it's actually with all my magic stuff. Shocker. So Google, oh hey, excellent. Google decided. I mean, how awesome is this? So, heads or tails? I I know you say tails always, but I'm giving yeah, you. Yeah, I think. Um, you know what? It's always going to be tails. Okay. Yeah. Bring me the tails. There you go. Heads it is. That was probably the most non-biased approach. I've seen Super Bowl guest stars flip a coin better than that. Uh... (laughs) Slop like Will Smith. I mean, what? (laughs) Uh, Moving along. All right, so uh, my pick is The Collector. This is from Dark Horse Comics. Uh, written by Will Conrad. Um, yeah, let me actually go to the first page here. Yep, so written by uh, Will Conrad and Rod Montiero. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know what I'm laughing for. The names I've got coming up. <laughs> oh, uh, Lines by Will, um, colors by Marco Lesco, and then lettering by Richard Starking, and Comic Crafts' Jimmy in court um the one thing that when when i jumped into this book that really stood out was this first page you know the credits the, page yeah yeah <laughs> i i absolutely Ooh. loved it for for this reason it gave me the shortest most effective synopsis of the book mm-hmm You know, watching society's changes over the century. You know, Michael has led, has had many names, experienced many adventures. Um, And then goes, wait, wait. Thailander. Thailander. Yeah. Yeah. There can be only one. (laughs) But, oh, Highlander, I am your brother. The fact that he's he's gone through, (laughs) you know, humanity's darkest moments. And gathered those stories. I'm like, okay, this, it it puts me in the right mindset of okay. what what to expect. Okay. Um. So, as we get in, into the story, keeping that in mind, uh, 
you know, we we go from present day back to 1941, World War II, mm-hmm. you know, very dark time um, in, in humanity's history. Mm-hmm. Um, and I found it very interesting that that this still had kind of the the pandemic feel okay. as as these prisoners are being separated and tested because of a virus but it's 1941 okay um and it's definitely taking place in in japan mm-hmm. um you know so right kind of at the start of world war one if you will but or world not, war one well, sorry world war two i was gonna say um and again keep in mind this is an origin book mm. but what a way to start off an origin book mm. i i love the artwork the color the colors that were used matches the time period mm-hmm. great which i absolutely love that they you know that they did that and Again, even though we're still trying to get an idea of what what's going on, like how how does Michael have the ability to to live this long? I mean, a, a Logan s type of life, if you will. Um, Don't kill McLeod. Sorry, <laughs> Eternal Warrior. Sorry. But I I'm already intrigued enough to know okay what what sort of artifact or in interesting memento if you will that is being collected from this mm-hmm. particular time period no that's an interesting show so mm. i mean the i i looked at this and keep in mind i had an opportunity to read like power rangers uh-huh and this caught my attention over the power rangers Hmm. I don't know what. What did you think of the collector? Um, I mean, I, aside from the shock that I didn't pick Power Rangers Power or Buffy for that matter, the Buffy book. I've got to say, the Buffy book was surprisingly good. Yeah, uh, considering considering it starts off as an alternative history, an alternative universe book. I was yeah. like, I was very impressed. But by the by, um. Right, so the collector. I liked, I liked the premise. I, I've always loved things like um, Highlander and Eternal Warrior. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, that sort of stuff does have an appeal to me. I like seeing um, how characters have interacted in the past and done different things. The fact they're using um, historical events as the, as a, as opposed to the setting, makes it even more poignant that the, mm-hmm. the, the things that the characters have gone through are actually real to an extent obviously there's dramatization applied yeah. um i think the only issue i have with books like this and it's a it's definitely a case of point for this one is that the character who we're following michael isn't in every panel so how does he know what happened in the panels where he's not in because surely you'd have no recollection of that. Because he wasn't there. Yeah. That's the only... And it's a conceit. It's a conceit that as a comic book reader or any sort of fiction reader when you talk about going back in time and whatever, or even when you're retelling a story, per se, there's always that conceit that there is something going on that the, the main character isn't privy to. Now, I'm all right with the idea of us seeing it because it helps, you know, set the scene for us, the reader. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's the kind of, it's the kind of, um, it's the kind of deal you take, isn't it? You know, yeah. you, you, say, oh, you take it on the chain because you want to know what's going on. Yeah. Um, I thought the art was great. I love the colours. I love the colours. Uh, I like the idea that this vaccine isn't a vaccine. Very um, conspiracy theorist, if you're up to date on your... Uh, Current booster jabs, yeah, you know they're going for round. We just started round four for in the UK, so oof, oof. Yeah. Um, so 
Will Conrad's a, a writer that I've, I've that I've seen books of from the past, um, mm-hmm. um, and he's he's never he's never disappointed. He's for me, he's kind of, and I'm really sorry to say this. Uh, Will could be a great guy, but for me, he's just bubbling under a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think with the right with the right sort of push, I think he'd be fantastic. Don't forget, Stephanie Phillips, who I mentioned earlier. She's a big fan of writing like historical, um, extra, historical events into her work. Mm-hmm. You know, the Butcher of Paris, for example. You know, it's based on true events. Yeah. And, you know, so she made she made it work, and I'm sure Will Conrad will as well. Um, I thought the letters were great. Uh, that's not a, that's not a jibe at anybody. No, um, no. I I think anytime we've yeah, mentioned it's... on on any pod that we've done that we always really yeah, give a shout that. out to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to letterers. Definitely, and I think um, I think the lettering here suits the book. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not super polished. It's not handwritten diary style. It's very very um, scratchy, as if done hurriedly, as if events are happening quickly. Yeah, and I think that really comes across in the book. Um, things happen quickly. Has to be. It's a four issue run. Yeah. So you know you gotta gotta get the pace warp speed, or else you know you gotta get caught in the you gotta get one of those books, the, <laughs> the final book where twenty seven different things happen on twenty two different pages. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I think the pace of the book seems really well. So yeah, hey, I, I was really impressed. The one the one thing that stood out talking about the lettering um, that that I thought was actually a, a smart approach. Mm-hmm. Um, I, let me bring up the this particular panel here, because this is being translated from the doctor's notes. Mm-hmm. The fact that they use the the carrots, if you will, to show that it's being translated for for our benefit. Yeah, but they're speaking in Japanese, as far as the story is concerned. I tell you what, I thought was brave choice. I mean, fair enough, the, the the vaccine stroke disease is the main thrust of this story. When you hear when you hear World War Two and you hear American and you hear Japanese, you think internment camps in the US. Mm-hmm. You don't think from the other side what was going on in Japan. Yeah. So I think I think this is a nice change of pace from that point of view. Yeah. I I I would agree. Um I just the one thing that, that I I hope and and I mentioned this more out of um, maybe respect for my my friends who are Japanese American. I mm-hmm. hope that it doesn't take any sort of anti Japanese uh, Semitic. Right. So that's that's a really good shout. That is a really good shout. Mm-hmm. But I suppose I suppose that the the message itself isn't isn't pro or negative one way or the other because it's just a historical events. Fact. yeah these are historical events that happen at least yeah. that's the idea right yeah so i mean yeah we we've still got a ways to go in the story i mm-hmm. just i i hope that 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 is kept in mind like in, in the back of their mind mm. to not push a, any sort of agenda if you will oh, i hope not i agree but Sorry. I mean, aside from that, it was it was a fantastic book, fantastic read. I'm excited to uh, to read the other three uh, more because I want to know I want to know more about what they're collecting, what's going on. Ah, you and Jenna George, you. Well, that belongs in a museum. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, good lord. Well, moving away from collecting things, what have you got for us? What? Well, you know what? We we use this. Um, I'm not going to say we use them as a as a punching bag, um, or we use them as a joke. But I would like to give a shout out to a company that I think we're all familiar with, um, and you know what? It's Zenoscope. And this is one of their 72 pages of content, Tales of Terror, 
quarterlies. These come out, as you can guess, quarterly over the year. Um, this is the Sea of Souls. Uh, the idea is this is a ghost ship per se, um, and there are four stories in here. Um, kind of connected when you get to the final one. Mm -hmm. so hey -ho. Give some credits where credits are due. Good luck reading all this. So you've got... <sighs> I tell you what, this just sheds some blood people. No, it's a story by Joe Bruscia, Ralph Tedesco, David Francini, David Wall, and Jenna Lynn Wright, with Lynn Wright getting the uh, writer's nod. Four different artists, because there's four different stories. You've got Alvaro Falou, Juan Francesco Mota, uh, Ricardo Osnara, I've said that wrong, and Eric Lopira Tamo. Tamio? Um, colors, you've got Jorge Cortez, uh, Robbie Bevard, Max Flan, Ara Jew, and Walter Pereira. And letters, thank God I can say this. Uh, Taylor Esposito, yeah, there you go, from Ghost Cliff Studios, who does a shed load of work for Xenoscope. And you know what? Should be working so, uh, for other companies. Taylor is absolutely mm -hmm. bang on. Quality letters all the way through. An expert in his field. He actually teaches at the Joe Kubert School of Art on lettering. So tell me why he's not getting any more books. I don't know. Whatever. Who, um, who knows? <laughs> who knows? Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of letterers? The shadow knows. <laughs> 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 um, all right. So straight up, we get into this book. Uh, first, first is a kind of a sex sells type of thing, but beauty's on the inside, not on the outside. Colours look gorgeous, uh, which is a, a, a facet of Xenoscope books that people forget just how mm -hmm. well pub, how, how, how well produced they are. Um, Lung comes a hottie. She thinks she's all that. She gets taken down a peg or two. That's all well and good. Things start getting a little bit wonky um, towards the end of this one where she's turning into a crazy mermaid type monster. Uh, next up, we have uh, Love's Lost Dream, I think it is. Oop, I've jumped too many pages. Where is she? There we go. So this guy is a serial cheater. Um, who'd have thunk? Who'd have thunk that a red swimsuit would be so alluring with this? Eh? Right. Uh, yeah. Um, again, great artwork, great lines. It's a little bit more cartoony, which I find interesting because the first part of the story is quite lighthearted. Like, hey, yeah. look at me, you kids. Da, da, da. Well, then when things get a little bit darker, um, you can see the lines get a little bit stronger, the body poses, changes. Um, things get really weird, and then he gets haunted by ghosts. Mm -hmm. okay. um, next up, if I remember correctly, is a super cartoony um, hot wife with old husband mm -hmm. deal. Um, and she's convinced the Leonardo DiCaprio type character here to bump off her husband so they can make off with a big fancy ring. Of course, that doesn't go well. Um, again, this is kind of played for, for me. It reads more like comedy. Hence, and again, the lighter artwork on this one. Mm -hmm. um, cheesecake. Funny enough, this book is cheesecake. I know Xenoscope <laughs> are known for that. But yeah. this is the most, I suppose, cheesecake I've seen them be for quite a while. Um, and then finally... The last story, which actually isn't the best one, the last one is for me the worst out of the bunch, where it's the thing that hinges it all together. Um, two thieves out for a big score, um, end up getting caught up in the ghostly goings on in the in the boat, and end up getting sort of betwixt between all the various comeuppances that the previous couples have uh, and characters have come across. Mm -hmm. so Hard to feel any empathy for thieves in this book, in this in this story. Um, it's a good payoff, I suppose, from that point of view. But I have to say, from from a stenoscope point of view, I absolutely thoroughly enjoyed this. I think there's enough, and the cover's great as well. Um, mm -hmm. There are enough. Um, what am I looking for? There's enough monsters or different types of horror going on in this book to appease anybody. You've got a monster. You've got a ghost. You've got gore. It's covered all the various elements of horror. It's not just like a one-trick pony. The yeah. fact they're trying to do 
several things, you know, with, with different types of characters, like uh, Beauty is, is more than skin deep. Um, the lust element from the second story, you know, the, the kind of greed element from in the in the third mm-hmm. and the fourth one. I think it just works. I, it just works. It's. It, I think the theme works throughout. I think the, the conclusions of each story is well done. Um, even the last part, which I didn't particularly enjoy, is well worked to get to where they need to be. Yeah. And you know what? You get 72 pages. And I, it's, not, it's a lot of book. <laughs> and I, I, it is. It is. And I, and I know what people say. It's like, you know what? I've been on the, the happy backy or whatever to, to recognize to, make, to talk about Xenoscope, but you know what? Some of their stuff recently has been ta- top notch. I mean, Van Helsing's been great. Yeah. Uh, Robin Hood's been decent. Um, yeah. So I think they save themselves for these tales of terrors, and this one works particularly well. Yeah. So, hey ho, sue me. No, I I would agree. I I thought the the variety in the different stories was great in this. Mm-hmm. I mean, it starts out with the thieves looking for their targets mm-hmm. and then transitions to you know the 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 first target that they were going to go towards or mm-hmm. you know to try and scam and you know then the story just moves on and i like the fact that we're able to see all these different events taking place on, on the boat mm-hmm. not coinciding together but they were mm. if that makes any sense um yeah now th- as, as far as xenoscope books go this one i would say takes like takes the top spot um or, or one of the top spots for for xenoscope books i think the only other one that i could think of would be what was it robin hood Robin Hood's pretty good at that, yeah. Um, but aside from that, and where I've been on this weird horror book kick as of late, um, I I was very impressed with it. Cool, excellent. A winner, a winner, winner for Zenoscope. Oh yeah, the, definitely. Yeah, yeah, cool. And no, I wasn't coming to that. You know, coming to the book just for the wings. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I know. But what we will do is we're going to take a break, go get some wings, and you guys enjoy this ad from one of our other shows here on Undercover Capes Podcast Network. There you have it, the definitive crusade. Yes, Whoa. it is the machine show. Even Yay, if I uh, read it, <laughs> <laughs> even if I happen to, you know, burn the candle at both ends and miss out on episodes and stuff. Oh, that's right. I remember. You're too much cake, boy. <laughs> well, you know, yep, yep, that, that's what I'm gonna go with. Yes, yes, cake but... made of margaritas. Yeah, <laughs> I ain't but... made in the, I ain't made in the cheese and ham pizza. Just saying, well, you know, <laughs> I'm still waiting for that cheesecake though. But, yeah, me too. um, definitely go check it out. Uh, we, we have a lot of fun 
on Definitive Crusade. I think we may be due for another Jeopardy episode here soon. Hmm. If you've never seen the Jeopardy episodes, oh, I, I think they're some of our best. But to, uh, it depends who does the quiz. It depends who does the questions. Hey, I've had some pretty epic questions. You have. You have. You have. So, I mean, I, I'm still very proud of my, um, you know, him not being able to learn how to ball with the fist, reach way back in a certain Hey, I got that right. You did get that right. I rocked that, that, that quiz. That Jeopardy, I rocked it start to finish. <laughs> I even gave away one of the answers and nobody believed me. Sheesh. I I know. I yeah, you'll you'll never let that one go. Um but I've been watching a lot of the old movie serials of, of Batman. So oh. I, I may have to uh the next time I I do the quiz. I will Who have to do a wizard? category. <laughs> oh, man. And I'm currently going through the 1943 serial with Dr. Daka. Yeah, it's on Amazon Prime, isn't it? Uh, it's yeah, it's on, it's on a few different uh, free streaming. So, I love um, the way that Batman Z's point out like that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, the, like the first yeah. one is... <laughs> The ears are more like this. They look like little cones that were sewn on. The second one, the 40, 49, they're more at an angle. But, See, I love those old serials, but for me, my favorite was always King of the Rocket Men. Mm, I haven't seen that one. Oh, man, it's, it's, it, it is what it is. It's, it's, it's the bloke's name's King, and he has a rocket pack. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Um, I just my my favorite moment. I think it was in the in the forty nine when Alfred is in in one office and he he's like blindly shooting in the air and he's like, "Did I kill them, sir? Yes, you killed seven of them, but there was only four. Yeah, you killed them twice or something like that. It was it was hilarious. But there's only um, six bullets. Yes." <laughs> That may be a question. How many, how many people did Alfred kill? Oh my god! Oh my! God. Oh, so yes, yeah, check out TDC. It's a blast. It yeah, blast. Good, um, good times. Even indeed. even if you just pick a bad book for Freya. So. Um, or we have to listen to you know more Red Hood or. Hey, all I know is this. All I know. Over the last two episodes, everybody's been missing by me. So I'm picking all the books for everybody. I know. I I, I watched <laughs> and when when you said that, I'm like oh, I'm gonna get Teen Titans Go. Is it if this is do one when we're doing this? Mm. I might even buy the trade paper back for you to look at. Oh um, joy. You're 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 so kind. Well anyway, back to back to indie. Back to indie. <laughs> so one of the things, again, if you've never watched the show. Uh, we like to highlight what what I feel has become the lifeblood of of indie comics. Oh, crowdfunding! Yeah. Now, so, sometimes the <laughs> that lifeblood can be a little questionable. Um. <laughs> Thankfully, this this week we actually had some, some decent picks. Yeah, it, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is about crowdfunding, but it seems to me a large percentage of people on crowdfunding think sex sells, and maybe it does. But when there's so much of it, yeah, you know what I'm saying. I think you're diluting your own product. I I, I would agree. Um... When when I had when I was looking to to find one that I I wanted to spotlight today, I mean I had to click view more. A lot. It, it was it was not fun. <laughs> unless there's a book comes out fishnet freaky fishnet fairies then then you know about about fairy folk who like fishnets then I'm talking fairy folk little dudes with wings you know yeah you know, like fairies. You know? 
a fair, however you want to pronounce it. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'd buy that book all day long. I wouldn't really. Tinkerbell's not my thing. I mean, I wouldn't put it past you. She doesn't ring my bell. Oh, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Well, you know, I kind of just want to take the lead on this one because I'm, I'm really excited for <laughs> the one that I found. All right. Okay. Hit it. So let, let's take two two genres, if you will. Two, two very different genres. I think my Kickstarter's got two genres as well. Oh. Yeah, yeah, my Kickstarter has. Yeah, yeah. Well, does yours have a, a sci-fi and a horror theme with some detective aspect? Uh, and yeah. now it is not pointy ears. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it does? Oh. <laughs> well, is yours... A vampire detective in space? No. Man, I'm so close. Son of a... <laughs> <laughs> no, no. My son's... No, no. So, <laughs> the, okay, for, first thing that caught, caught my eye on this. Okay. Vampire detective in space about a vampire with a snarky AI companion. All right, with well, that, yeah, sounds good. All right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. so far, just that one line, you've already got me sold. <laughs> so th this is being put together by uh, Caleb Palmquist um, from Spokane, Washington, here in the states, and a again, we follow a vampire detective named James with his AI assistant, uh, Liz, which, not a bad name for an AI. How so? It just rolls off the tongue, Liz. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I'm, I'm trying here. I'm trying. <laughs> but the first thing that stood out, I love the, I, I really love the colors. Yeah, yeah we're using this. Red. It definitely yeah. has that futuristic feel to it. The lettering was downright gorgeous. Yeah. I like how the lettering lets the arch read. Mm -hmm. Which sounds like a really pretentious, pretentious thing to say, but too, so many times when you get books, um, the try and crowd, lots of text or monologue or dialogue, something on there, and it just doesn't let you uh, enjoy the environment. Yeah, and I suppose when you're talking about you know futuristic books or sci-fi books, you want to feel the environment you're in because it's new. You want to you want to enjoy it. You want to sort of like breathe it in. You don't yeah. want it spoiled down with like umpteen different um, word balloons. Yeah. Well, and not only that, I mean they they've done a great job with like the backgrounds. Mm. Very detailed. You you look yeah, it's detailed but not cluttered. Yeah. It's it, it do you know what? It reminds me a little bit. I'm gonna give it a little bit of high praise on this one. It reminds me a little bit of Star Wars in that it's a lived in universe mm -hmm. rather than something that's quite antiseptic. Yeah. Trust me, I meant it as a compliment. Yeah, no, I I'm not disputing it. And, and the fact <laughs> that even you know individuals in the background i mean they they've done a good job and where we've been very particular on if you're going to have people in the background you need to give them proper details the way that they've done their perceptions or their depth if you will mm -hmm. has, is done well enough that you can tell that like on, on this this one panel that they're that i have here in the center, you can tell they're further away because you have no detail. But people that are closer, you can tell with no wonder of who is that. Mm. So hopefully they're taking lessons from other companies that we won't name. Okay. That, that like to rush it. 
<laughs> what are you trying to say? But, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know. All right. Okay. You know. Yeah, yeah. But at, at the end of the day, this this looks like a phenomenal read. And keep in mind that this is going to be issues. Um, that this Kickstarter is for issue number two. Mm-hmm. Um, however, the cool thing is, if you want to get uh, get caught up for just ten dollars, you can get issues one and two in digital, or for uh, what was it for fourteen of oh, those variants and stuff like that. Um, I was scrolling down. Ah, there it is. there it is. For eighteen dollars, you can get it both in digital and and paper or in physical copy, and it ships anywhere in the world. Cool. So, I mean that that in itself, you're getting two books. You know, be completely caught up with the story. Yes, please. <laughs> you just like you just like snacky eye. Yeah. What's your thing? Uh, yeah. It, it kind of the so Liz reminds me a lot of Ghost from Franklin and Ghost. Ah, oh, okay. Cool. And I love and I love that that whole the Garrett Gun universe. She reminds me of um, Lila from Spider Man Twenty Ninety Nine. Oh yeah, yeah. And also Star Trek New Frontier because it's the same character practically. Yeah, but it would be written, both written by Peter David. So. <laughs> Shway. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but, well, but close. I, I mean, the fact that we're we're getting really, you know, what what appears to be solid books and stories for an affordable price. Mm-hmm. That that's the other thing that I look at. So when I'm going through trying to decide, okay, what what Kickstarter do I want to highlight? Mm-hmm. Um, that's another thing I look at. You, you know, just want it, you want the drink sticker. I know what you want. I, yeah. <laughs> Who wouldn't want that? I mean, that's genius. Um, I do like the idea of the trading cards as well. Yeah. So. Cool. And then, obviously, you can get other books that that Caleb is has written. Um, obviously, for more to to the Kickstarter. Um, the the other thing that I was looking at when I was when I picked this was I wanted to to find something that wasn't necessarily fully funded yet but still has plenty of time yeah i mean 20 days it's actually what is it three nearly four thousand dollars pledged over a six thousand dollar target so you're pretty much you're talking what that's 80 percent or something stuff like that so, so and, you've got 20, and you've got 20 days to go yet so i mean you've got plenty of yeah. time yeah so right now they're at yeah 65 uh, at, at the time of recording Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm, definitely, I'm definitely worth checking out. Cool, excellent. So that that's my pick. Go check it out. Vampire Detective in Space. Number two. <laughs> Does what it says right on the tin. <laughs> Boom. Uh, I roll. All right. Okay. So is it my Kickstarter now? Yes, it is your Kickstarter. My Kickstarter. All right. Okay. Ooh. So let me bring. Let me see if we can get this going. Uh, share screen, tab, uh, boom. All right, so for those who follow everything that is particularly UCPN, you will know that I have interviewed writer, creator, Todd Black, writer of this fantastic um, series, um, Tokyo Blade Detectives. Yeah, it's not set in the future, but it's ninjas, it's Tokyo Sorry, it's not set in space, I should say. It's Tokyo. Um, you've got laser swords. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, just look at this panel. This Ooh. panel, what does that look like? It's Does that not look like evocative of, of like how the fight between Dooku and Anakin should have looked like on Attack of yeah. the Thrones? Yeah. Yeah. With that motion of the swords going and cutting through. Man. It is just a gorgeous, gorgeous looking book. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing about Todd that you need to know is he has umpteen successful Kickstarters. 
All right. And even as we speak at time of recording, this book is already over where it needs to be. It's been pledged $1,844 of a target with only 750. All right. So you've got, you've still got a week or so left to back this. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, you get all the usual stuff. You can uh, pledge as little as a pound, uh, sorry, a dollar. Then you've got, you get newest issue for $3. Um, You get um, teaser as to what comes next in five, $5. There's loads of different things going on um, with this book. It's just, it's just good fun, Mm -hmm. basically. Um, a bit buffy in places, you know. She, this character is the, the character with destiny. She's she's the the lead of the piece. Um, she has a snarky AI as well. Her her mentor, uh, who gives a grief. Um, lovely put touches here. How she's re- remembering about the time when she was with her mum before mm-hmm. things went a bit south. Manga style is is part of the part of the course with this book. I just think it's it's just so well put together, and Todd um, is such a passionate guy about his work. It's absolutely unbelievable, you know. So I mean, if you wanted to hear about it straight from the horse's mouth, go and check out outside the panels. It's there. there yeah. So after this episode, before YouTube or your podcast app pushes something else, just head over to that. Yeah. Cool. There you go. Dead I like simple. it. Dead, dead, snappy, dead. Wow. Colorful, <laughs> energetic. What more, what more do you want? What more? What more do you want from a book that has the term uh, blades <laughs> detective in it? <laughs> yeah, no, no de- definitely nothing more. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Cool. A- any other? Yeah. Anything so, else that you wanted yeah, to highlight? So um, I had an opportunity to catch up with um, a new creator who's using Indigo Pop. We don't talk about Indigo Pop. Well, Indigo Pop is the alternative crowdfunder to uh, Kickstarter. Maybe not as maybe not as well known. Um, maybe find this fit a little bit as a mm-hmm. as a as a bit of a um, project, I guess. But this book's called Black Rhapsody. A bit Beyonce meets uh, gem meets magic stuff. In fact I tell you what, instead of me telling you about it, this is Miss Rayner. She'll tell you about it. Right. Physical magical girls versus Lovecraftian and Beyonce. There you go. Magical Short, girls. Sweet with, to the point. <laughs> magical girls, gothic girls, music, Beyonce. What more do you want? Yeah. It's got manga style. It's got some gem and holograms in there. So oh, ex- gem. Ex- <laughs> expect some uh, transformations. That's all I'm saying. Um, um, but you know what? It's um, go and check out the Indigo Go page. Just type Black Rap- Rhapsody, it'll take you there. It was due for release on April 29th. However, there has been a couple of snafus um, from an artistic point of view, uh, but it gives you an opportunity to log on to their mailing list, which means that you will get the nod when the thing goes live. And honestly, that's that's the best way to do it because one one thing I have seen other creators do i don't know if they're necessarily doing this but a lot of times they will have special rewards um yeah for those who back uh right out of the gate so i believe i believe that if you sign up to the newsletter so you get your sign up for the email to tell you when the thing goes live you will automatically be sent when the books when the project's done a trading card featuring one of the characters from the book oh cool so there you go. Cool. You know, I, I, all about the information. Oh yeah. You should call me Johnny the Information Machine. Machine Hughes. Johnny the Information Machine. Machine, machine Hughes. Hughes. Yeah. It's not going to work. Kind, it? it kind of rolls off the tongue like sandpaper. It rolls off your tongue like Liz. <laughs> And on that note, we're going to wrap up this episode of Flipside Focus. We hope you guys enjoyed it just as much as we did. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I have a blast with this show. So, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely, you know, check out the Kickstarters. If it's something you want to back, you know, sign up for 
um, either the mailing list for Black Rhapsody or, you know, various books we've looked at. Various yeah. books we've looked at, looked at. Um, and then if there's any books that we've reviewed that you want to pick up, hit up your local comic book store. Tell them, I want this book. All the books we've talked about today, so both the collector, Xenoscope, and the Buffy books we alluded to, are out this week. They are on the racks now. So go go pick them up. Add them to your pull lists. Because we want to help our local comic book shops keep the doors open. Because... One, it's a small business, and we want to support our local small businesses. Definitely, definitely. There you go. That's the other lifeblood of comics. Is yep, local comic book shops. Com- yep, it's the way to go. It's where I've met some, of my, you know, some of my really good friends have been at the comic book shops. So that's why Josh and I are in different countries. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And on that note. <laughs> Make sure to check out all of our other shows on the Undercover Case Podcast Network, including the Old Timers Comic Book Show, where the hosts aren't old, but the comics most certainly are. And for you indie fans, I'm going to give you a little bit of a heads up. The next episode of Old Timers features teen superhero groups. And I know for a fact that somebody has picked Cowabunga, dude. It's turtle time. Ooh. Ooh. Very nice. And as we mentioned earlier, check out the Definitive Crusade, where that man is the host of the UCPN Justice League. Because I, I, <laughs> I feel like we, we have a, a Justice League. Or, well, I called I called them bad girls the other day, and you know, lost the crap about that. So God knows if you call them the Justice League. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, Matthew will be be excited because you know, I just guess so Red you know, Hood Matthew, shows up. Yeah, just so you know, Matthew, the Red Hood is never in the Justice League. So it's not. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> We'll we'll find a place for a red hood. I mean Matthew. <laughs> and then you know, we, we've got all of our other shows. Crisis of the Toyverse, if you love Great action show. figures, go Great check show. that out. And then uh sloppy spoilers. If you want to listen to a very thorough, in depth uh review of TV movies, it's very thorough. They go very, very deep. They get sloppy up in there, if you know what I mean. I don't, but I don't think I want to find out. Thanks. <laughs> and then, as always, make sure to check out our sister site, ComicCrusaders.com, uh, for all comic book reviews, a lot done by the legend himself. Yeah, so don't check it out. There is the Buffy. The, I think it's called the Vampire Slayer number one. Is mm-hmm. on there by me. You'll see a more in depth review of the Genoscope book we talked about. Yep. Uh, yeah. And then Al's, Al's, uh, the Comic Crusaders podcast where he's been doing a bunch of interviews. Yeah. He does a lot. Yeah. He's so been, he's been killing it over there. So yeah. 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 So go check that out. But as always, Johnny, Joshua, this has been a blast. Thank you very much. You too, sir. We may have to, you know what? I think for the next episode, we're going to have to get Tracy on. I'm all right with that. I I would love to pick her brain and see what books she picks and why. Yeah, that's a good show. I agree. Bring it on. So stay tuned for that. It'll be good times. And that's going to be it. So we will catch you all on the flip side. Adios. Visit UndercoverCapes.com for the latest and greatest podcasts via the Undercover Capes Podcast Network. Also visit our parent company website, ComicCrusaders.com, all about comic pop culture.